Hello, my name is Stefano, and I'm a product manager in the automated reasoning team at AWS. In this third video of this tutorial series, we'll show you how to use tests to refine and improve an automated reasoning policy. Let's head to the test screen and let's start creating a new test for our policy. We'll be adding it manually. Let's start with a test about returns for items that were purchased with deluxe delivery. I'm going to give the system just about enough information to determine the validity. I'm going to say that I received the item through deluxe delivery and that it seems damaged and whether I can return it. Um, I'm going to give the correct answer, so I expect it to be valid. And I'm also going to increase the confidence threshold. With the confidence threshold, I'm telling automated reasoning checks that I want it to be really certain about its natural language to logic translation before making a validity claim. Now, the output of this is that a test is satisfiable. Satisfiable means that it could be true or it could be false. It's incomplete. And if we look at the two examples we have, the positive and counter example, the days since delivery seems to be the sticking point. Now, to address this, I'm going to update the test and add an indication of how many days since delivery there were. Alternatively, if I wanted this to be valid, I could edit the policy and remove all conditions and constraints around the days since delivery. I'm going to say last month. And let's see the validation output again. Now, when I run this, the system tells me that the, it's a, the sentence is ambiguous. And if you look at the alternative translations proposed below in the finding, the sticking point is last month. One translation says it could be between 0 and 31, and the other one, it says no more than 30. This is actual ambiguity that we should address, either by asking the user to rephrase and give an exact timeline, or in this case, we can update the policy, specifically that variable that captures the day since delivery, to give automated reasoning checks instructions on how to interpret things like last month. In this case, I'm going to tell it, assume it's 30 days. Now, this will get saved as an annotation, and we will apply it to make the changes to the policy. We can see the annotation here comes back as we expected with the diff saying that we are just going to change that variable description. We can accept the changes and go back to our tests and see what should be the next step. We can see that it's still not passed. It says it's satisfiable. So let's take a look. It interpreted the day since delivery correctly, followed my instructions. Now it says 30 days. What it's saying now when you see those potential assignments in the example and counter examples for the satisfiability is that, well, it's still incomplete. The policy is a lot more complex than this. There's a lot more information. This is actually desirable. You could have your LLM ask the user follow-up questions to populate all of the necessary details to make a validity claim. In this case, I suspect in my application, I would be happy with this being satisfiable. So instead, I'm just going to change the expected result of the test. I am happy that I was able to clarify something in the policy. Yes, the test now matches the expected result. Let's add something else. Let's go to another test. This time, let's add one about a gift. And specifically, a gift I want to return and that I state that it is eligible for return. As a user, I'm telling the system that I should be able to return it. Let's run this validation and see what happens. The system says that this is impossible. If you see, we laid out a premise that what the user said, which is it's a gift and it's eligible for return. And this premise is impossible because it breaks a rule. Automated reasoning checks feels free to change or suggest changes to claims, but not to premises. Now, th this could be the intended behavior of the system. We should go back to the user and say, what you're asking me is impossible. Or perhaps it's a mistake in the policy. We actually do want these questions to be possible. If that's the case, then we simply go and delete or edit that rule to make it possible. 
here. I'm just going to take that rule ID and head over to the definitions and ask for that rule to be deleted. We can find it by using the search and create an annotation to delete it using the actions. Let's apply this annotation. Nothing unexpected here. Um, the diff screen shows me that it will be deleting that rule and I can accept the changes. Now with this changes applied, I can see that the test is still not passing. So let's go take a look. It no longer says impossible, but it says satisfiable. Looking at the example and counterexample shows me that once again, the days since delivery is the sticking point. Let's try and clarify that here. The rules around gifts are much simpler. So hopefully we can turn this test into valid. I'm just going to change the question to say when exactly it was delivered. Here I'm editing the test in the real world in a chatbot. You could be asking this as a follow up question to the user. It continues to be satisfiable because the policy is complex. And it looks like next what is incomplete is all the information about the state of the item. I'm going to try and give a high level version of it and just say that it's unopened and like new. Again, here I'm editing the test in the real world in a chatbot. These could be follow up questions to the user or asking your LLM to give a more complete example in its answer, not just yes. Include all of these informations around the constraints. With this change, we were able to turn that answer into valid, specifying all of the necessary information to match one of the rules and policy that confirms the validity of this statement. By creating tests this way and analyzing the output, we can get a lot of actionable insights into what needs to be updated and fixed in our policy. Another possible source of ambiguity in tests are variables that have similar names, descriptions, or semantic meanings in the automated reasoning policy. For this test, I created a new variable called is part of bundle. It's intentionally ambiguous because it's similar to is bundle purchase. And the system is telling us that there's ambiguity. We don't know how to parse the input text given the similar set of variables. This points to an issue with the automated reasoning policy. And the way to solve it is to remove or rename or change the description of the confusing variables. We can go to definition and find our variable. You can see this is the one I just added and has an issue because it's unused. It's not used in any rules. I just added the variable. Let's delete it and run that test again. Let's apply the annotation to delete the variable. The proposal is what we expected, which is to delete the variable. We can accept the changes and go look at our test again. And we can see that a test now is passing. It's no longer ambiguous. And we have the two satisfiable findings we expect. One that covers the first portion of the answer with the question, and one that covers the second portion of the answer. Let's look at another example of tests we might want to pay attention to. In this one, we expected satisfiable, and it returns satisfiable. However, when I look at the findings, I see that one of the findings says that one of the premises, I stored it in a temperature controlled dry location, is untranslated. What this means is that the automated reasoning policy had no variables to capture this information. If we believe it is important to the policy, then we should create variables to capture it and use them in our rules. Let's try and do that. Let's go to definition first. I'm going to add a new variable. I'm going to call it appropriate storage location. This defines whether items were stored in a 
location that follows the best practices recommended on the item description such as a dry location let's start by applying this annotation so that we can add the new variable and then we'll use it in a rule okay let's accept these changes and now we can go back to the definitions and add our new rule there are two ways to add a rule we can write the formal logic code directly if we want to or we can use natural language to describe what we would like i'm going to use natural language for this example and i will say that items are eligible for return only if they were stored in an appropriate location you can see we have now an annotation to add a new rule with its description let's apply it and see what the output is we can see that it's proposing adding the rule exactly what we wanted let's accept these changes and go back to check our tests The test still passes because it's satisfiable and we can see that now the automated reasoning policy has the variables it needs to translate the entire input q a thanks for watching this tutorial video series reach out to us through repost um, via social media or customer support and let us know if you'd like us to cover other topics and expand this series